Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. Good morning and welcome to this week's National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. I'm your co-host, Florence Myers McSwine, here with your host, Mr. Lee Martin, and our guest today, Mr. Sean Cowley from America's Front Porch, Washington, D.C. So, Lee, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic once again, and I tell you, it's always great to um, have you come on and we don't get together like we normally do uh, as we normally do in the studio. And this is a total uh, different experience as we are learning to Zoom and we've been Zooming our shows until it's safe to come out to go back into the studio. But until that time, I'm doing just fine and I'm trusting that everyone else, uh, our listeners and viewing audience are doing the same, staying safe. So, Mr. Sean Calloway, how are you? I am doing good. Thank you for having me to be on WHMB uh, 40. Is just, um, I'm ecstatic uh, to talk to you and the citizens of Indiana. This is wonderful. All right. Okay. And Sean, mm. you are, I, I love the way you sound, sir. You've got mm, that voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about um, NFB Newsline, the free audio information service for the blind and visually sure. impaired community. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I know that you're familiar with Newsline. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, ma'am. What's your favorite? Uh, what was the Indianapolis uh, Morning Star? What, what's, what's the name of the paper in Indiana? I, I, I would say that, of course, Washington Post. Yes. Washington <laughs> Times. I figured that. Yes, Baltimore Sun, anything that's close to home, uh, USA Today. Um, I, I I use my news line all, every day. I mean, there's not a morning I don't wake up listening to NFB news line. Of course, I go to the sports page first. And, um, you know, it's just a wonderful uh, asset uh, that I put in my tool belt for myself for information. Um, and I always uh, refer to this as adding to my quality of life. I just love Newsline and what it offers. I mean, I'm just telling you the basics of what I use it for, but it's so much more you, you can use Newsline for. It's so beneficial uh, to the blind community. I'm just, I'm just so happy that it's, um, it was developed some years ago and, it, and it's still going strong. Well, you know, Sean, I um, want to ask you, you know, what devices do you use to access the service? Oh, my iPhone, uh, my my trusty pal, uh, my sidekick. I use the iPhone uh, to access Newsline. Um, I have not, and I'm going to start using the mobile app as well, uh, but definitely my iPhone is 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 what I use to uh, access Newsline. Okay, the dial in. Okay, yep. on the keypad. Okay, yeah, yep. I, I would advise you to try to use that app when you, Florence. Yes, I know. I use the iPhone, uh, Sean, and I use the app, and it makes it so much easier. I can access everything, including the KNFB reader, uh, mm -hmm. basic. I mean, I, I love using the app, it just makes things a lot more simpler for me. You know, but we all have our way of doing things, you know, what mm -hmm. works for me may not be what you like, but um, right. still we've got this NFB news line and uh, I think it's awesome. Let's let's put it this way. It, for me, it's not gone to waste. Um, I'm going to use it no matter <laughs> yes, how, sir. how I get in. It's going to be utilized. Uh, and, you know, we have, you know, as Lee knows, and you know, you have a certain uh, administrator here in the city. Every, every jurisdiction has a news line administrator. And if you contact my administrator, they'll tell you, you get usage from Sean Calloway, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. Well, you know, Sean, you mentioned uh, sports and, um, you know, both of us are sports enthusiasts. 
but mm -hmm. um, and you like reading it, uh, sports, your, your, your teams there in the Washington area. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'd be glad when you guys get some more good news about your teams out there. So yeah. um, you won't yeah. have such a, a, mm. such a sad uh, sports page out there to read. What Boy, is, I, I swear, Lee, you, you <laughs> would think that Indiana's on top of the world when you said that. <laughs> now, you, did, that sound like he was throwing a little bit of shade to me. That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> yeah, boy, way, way to go, Pacers. You uh, <laughs> was just in the lottery last night. <laughs> but it's fine. I'll take it. As a season ticket holder of the Washington football team and the Washington Wizards, I'll take that shot. So it's all, all good. Right. I'm fine. <laughs> all mm -hmm. right, then. Okay. So we'll, we'll check you out with the coach this year. Yes. But anyhow, yeah. um, okay. So like we said, there is so much to, uh, to um, get from the NFB Newsline. I mean, so much information, so many sources that we have. Uh, this is a program that's uh, basically sponsored by the National Federation of the Blind. Um, the NFB Newsline is one of our uh, programs that we offer. And we have citizens from all over the world that use this service. And uh, we have publications uh, that are, are international publications as well as national publications. Uh, um, we also have what we call breaking news, which uh, I would advise people to check that out as well because there's 44 different publications on there. And with those, it's, it's a wire feed and you're breaking news. You, you start out in the morning with news at the first hour and then throughout the day as uh, every hour is updated and um, the content uh, remains uh, throughout the day. And it just keeps you well informed um, with such publications as Bloomberg, uh, uh, CBS News, uh, CNN, uh, the Daily Beast, which I find to be very uh, interesting. Um, uh, the ESPN Online uh, was something there, Sean, that you might want to mm -hmm. check out. Uh, um, the Huffing Huff Post uh, and Medical Express. Those are just a few. And, um, and I really have started reading Mental Floss. I think that's a great publication uh, mm -hmm. as well. And then there's another one that's called uh, Root. I always... Uh, uh, express that one as one of my favorites to read as well. So there's a lot of publications there on the breaking news uh, 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 publications. So we also have each state has a, um, a specific channel and on that specific channel, it's uh, information there and resources there within your state and within your area. So uh, you can go there and find out a lot about um, different resources in your area, uh, where the NFB uh, chapters are and uh, when they meet and things of that nature and what's going on in your area for resources. Um, uh, let's see here. And as I say, there's a lot of publications from other states. And uh, some of the national publications, Sean spoke about some of those. Um, uh, the Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, USA Today, and on and on. There's about 14 of those, um, about 14 international publications, uh, such as the um, Daily Mail, United Kingdom, uh, Financial Times, Globes Israel. Right now, that's a very interesting and hot, a lot of hot topics over there. Uh, the Guardian. India Times, that's been a hot topic uh, with COVID over in that area. Uh, Japan, Jerusalem, London. So we just have a plethora of publications that you can, uh, can reach and uh, read on a daily basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And once again, it is free. So you can't beat that F-R-E-E, -E, free publications all over the world through NFB Newsline. And Florence, would you talk about a few of the other devices that you can um, use? Sure, Lee. Um, as we just mentioned, I, I use the iPhone app. Um, there's also the A-Lady, and um, I, I, I didn't want to say the name, but you know who, who that is, because she speaks every time I say her name. Um, there's also the... Um, digital player from the Talking Book and Braille Library, of course, the computer. A lot of people still use the home phone. And so they, um, the home phone, 
and, and Android, as well as the Victor Reader Stream. Uh, these are all ways that uh, we can access this free audio information service. And again, it's available everywhere. Let's say from Alabama to Washington, D.C., you can uh, get that access to that free service right at your fingertips. And uh, also we have the magazines, and I know one of your favorite is the AARP magazine. And um, There you are, throwing a little bit more. Yeah, shot. I'm like, my God. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'll take that. I'll take that because I am, right. I am a senior citizen. I'm a proud senior citizen, and I love AARP magazine. Um, there's and, also, in, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and, and Florence, I'm, I'm not even going to lie. I, I had no idea. You so spry and vibrant. I had no idea you were a senior <laughs> citizen. So he can hate all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That, you know what they say? You say, okay, I hear a little bit of hater aid going on over there. Oh, that's no, okay. It's, it's, it's all done in love. <laughs> it's all done in love. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with the AARP magazine and, uh, well, there's also some for children. There's, you know, the children's magazines and um, there's people, there's magazines for people who are um, into, um, let's say, you know, sports uh, such as yourselves. There's also WebMD magazine, Shape magazine. There's Men's Journal. There is a magazine for everyone and every taste. So um, I like to emphasize AARP because uh, a lot of people love that magazine and, um, we get a lot of information there. So thank you for reminding me, sir, of ARP <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, there's so much to read there. We have over 100 uh, publications, and we continue to add our, onto our magazines and our newspaper uh, content. Um, you know, so there's, a, you know, a lot of people go to the Smithsonian. That's very popular right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also have a successful framing um, Time magazine Um uh, with the children, there's Stone Soup, um, and then there's also WebMD, the magazine. And there's and also some, Guideposts. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people still love to read Guideposts. Very inspirational magazine. So there, there's so much more to NFB Newsline, and we'll talk some more about that. But you know, you can go and also find out just more than just news. Uh, there's uh, retail ads uh, with Target and, and Walmart and uh, in certain uh, areas that you have grocery ads, uh, which is very um, useful. Uh, we also have job postings. There is over, uh, we have two search engines uh, with job postings and job listings with over 200,000 job listings uh, all over the country. So uh, you know, all you have to do is create your profile and um, look for your jobs uh, all over the country. So we're going to take a short pause and we're going to come back and we're going to talk with Mr. Sean Calloway all the way from the front porch uh, of the country, Washington, D.C. We'll be right back. Thousands of Indiana residents feel isolated from the world due to vision problems. Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm blind. I read Stars and Stripes on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline. Welcome back to this segment of the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. And today we're speaking to Mr. Sean Calloway from Washington, D.C. And Sean, again, thank you so much for being our guest today. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm pretty excited. We're excited to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean, this, this show is about you. And um, mm. tell us a little bit about Mr. Uh, well, let's say young Sean Calloway. Younger, I'm not saying mm. old. But let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about you. Um, um, let's say you're right now you're in Washington D.C. But um, mm -hmm. were you born in Washington D.C.? Actually, I was born in Washington D.C. at the old Freedmen's Hospital, which is now Howard University Hospital. But um, 
Yeah, I was born in Washington, D.C., and um, I grew up into a beautiful family. Um, you know, uh, uh, not only it was not just me and my mom, but, you know, I had her siblings were like my brothers and sisters, my Uncle Larry, my Uncle Chip, my Aunt Donna. Of course, having uh, grandparents, um, especially I was very, very close to my grandmother. And also, you know, my Aunt Juanita and my cousin Brenda. That, Brenda, that was the base of my family here in Washington, D.C. as a child. And of course, I, I got family all over the country. But when I talk about growing up and really having um, sort of that that support system, I, I already knew I had it early. Um, you know, I, I knew there were times I really didn't have to want for nothing in regards to support um, and sort of the the, the importance of rearing my life um, into where it is today. Um, and, you know, like I said, I grew up a happy child, didn't have um, too many problems, knock, knock on wood, and thank God for that. You know, and then, you know, around around seven, eight years old, uh, my mom met the love of her life. Um, you know, I don't like to use the word stepdad, but he's, you know, he's my father because he raised me. But, mm -hmm. you know, once he came into the fold, then that's when, you know, uh, you know, really things really uh, took shape for me. Now, I will say uh, I still had some mischievous ways. I, I wasn't like, you know, a saint, you know. Now, you know, I still uh, I had the practical jokes going on and, you know, the, the, you know, the, the fun things that kids do. But uh, overall, I, 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 I could say that my childhood, I had a wonderful experience. And it, it, and it really, Lee and Florence, it surrounded around it was sports as well. Uh, as you mentioned in the last segment, I'm a sports enthusiast. Well, I grew up playing sports, boys club sports, and eventually playing high school sports. So um, being active in, in athletics was something that kept me grounded, um, kept me out of trouble, um, it kept me around the right people. And, um, and it was my protector, um, especially at that time as an adolescent, when you're talking about um, the crack epidemic hitting the Washington, D.C. area. And you're looking at, you know, a lot of my contemporaries, my friends, um, I mean, quite honestly, the, who, who started hustling and selling drugs, right? And so they got into that lifestyle. And so my my safe haven was sports and my family. And so that that allowed to keep me on the straight and narrow. Well, let's tell you, Sean, uh, that was an epidemic that hit this country that um, still has, uh, it resonates still today. Uh, indeed you know and uh, mm -hmm. you know we'll find time to talk about that at some other point in time because mm -hmm. it really needs to be exposed and talked about more but sure. <clears throat> it sounds as though you know when your father came into the picture there um, mm -hmm. and your family it sounds like your family was a very compassionate family mm -hmm. and, uh, and and from knowing you you know you have that um, compensity to be uh, compassionate and mm -hmm. I want to ask you, um, during all this time, um, did you ever um, meet anyone with a disability or did you meet anybody that with um, with blindness as a, as you grew up as a child? Blindness, no. Um, you know, the closest blind person I knew was the same blind person everyone knows, Stevie Wonder. But I didn't know him personally. But um, I would say that I, I had an uncle, Uncle Mural. Uh, my aunt Carrie's, which is my grandmother's sister's husband, uh, had a disability, was in a wheelchair. And so that was the closest to uh, knowing a person uh, with a disability. I never, uh, I said, I never grew up with anyone with a disability, never had a friend. And it wasn't like I was trying to avoid someone with a disability. I just never grew up with anyone who had a disability. Now, as far as, you know, just listening to you just talking about your village um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and uh, the people that that really impacted your life, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, I, I, I know that 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 to be, um, you know, that has a way of directing our, you know, directing us and pulling mm -hmm. our own strengths in, you know, pulling mm -hmm. our own strengths and helping us identify uh, exactly who we are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as growing up in, in that village, in that, um, that family and doing the air, because I know that you are uh, indeed younger than I am. But as far as in Washington, D.C., and, mm -hmm. you know, and actually using sports as your, uh, as your, as your way of uh, saying, okay, I, I found my niche. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. What was your favorite sport? And uh, or did, or were you into all sports? Uh, uh, well, before, I played... before, before yes. you answer that, Sean, uh, sure. we'll have to take us a short pause and okay. we'll be right back with your answer. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And um, stay tuned, everyone. So we'll be right back on NFB Newsline, Indiana. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline, experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read NFB Newsline. With my failing eyesight, I'm not able to read regular newspapers and I'm not able to keep up with obituaries. I've been a homemaker all of my life, but since my vision has failed, I wish I could read my favorite magazine. Have you heard of the NFB Newsline? Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because lower expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. Welcome back. And Sean, we were speaking about your favorite sports. Um, tell us a little mm. bit about that. Oh, well, it was definitely football. Uh, you know, I played boys club football and high school football. It was just something, like I said, it's, one thing I'm big on, uh, I'm big on camaraderie. Uh, I <laughs> love scoring a few touchdowns here and there. I love catching passes, but it was the relationships that were built off the field that I will always cherish. Um, and I still maintain, um, you know, some wonderful friendships uh, from playing football uh, to this day, uh, which was very beneficial to me, at, as you'll, you'll hear later on. So especially as a, you know, becoming a blind person. So I love, you know, just playing. I love playing on Saturdays. But, you know, uh, the, the fun parts with me were the, the day before a game or uh, times after a game or, uh, the, you know, just the the laugh and joking in the locker room or, you know, it, it, it was all about the camaraderie and the friendship. So, and, and again, that's what kept me grounded and also kept me focused, even though this was, wasn't something that sort of led me to college, it was something I truly enjoyed. Well, right. I, I tell you, it's, it's nice to hear you talk about a camaraderie and, and building um, and, and outside of sports. I know uh, education, uh, was something that you really um, placed yourself into uh, and, and really made some accomplishments. So uh, you know, tell us about your, your basic education. Well, uh, uh, from a high school standpoint, I, I you know attended the high school at a public school. Um, I'm going to be honest, I did not get truly focused on education until my junior, senior year. Because <laughs> I'm starting to look around <laughs> And my friends are, are talking about college and applying for college. And I'm like, uh, I, I think I better kick it in gear. I'm going to be quite quite honest with you as well. Um, the thing that really j- jump-started me, and, I, and I'm dead serious on this, is when I went to a movie theater to see a movie with, with my friends uh, at a dollar movie in, in Riverdale, Maryland, I will never forget. And uh, we went to go see a movie called School Days. Uh, and I'm telling you, once I left that movie theater, after seeing that movie, I said, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to college. Um, and so those last two years, uh, after I saw that movie, I got it in gear and I was able to, you know, get myself ready for college. And I, I chose to go to school all the way down in South Carolina. Is that South Carolina? Yep. South Carolina State University. Yes, indeed. All so, right, sir. So prior to that, um, you know, with your schooling and everything, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, uh, was church a part of your um, uh, rearing? Um, it seems as though it, it, may, it may have been. 
Mm -hmm. from what I know of you. Well, you know, God has always been a part of my life. Um, and, you know, I, 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 again, when it comes to fond memories, uh, I just love when I would go to church with my aunt Lita, Vermont Avenue Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. And so though I was not, quote unquote, a frequent uh, attendant of church like I am now, it, God has always been a part of my family. Um, and so trust me, uh, I, I, yeah, I was involved in church uh, as, as a youngster, not as much as I should have been. But God has always been, let me hit, let me, I'm going to just say that again, always been a part of my life. And uh, if, if, if I didn't know it, somebody in my family would make sure I knew that. Mm. All right. Now, Sean, now, uh, as far as um, your upbringing, your family, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of stuck there in my mm -hmm. head because I can, I can visualize your family seems to be very close, close knit. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you also seem to be a very um, um, close knit to, well, you're, I'm, I, well, I know that you are, have an immediate family, and I guess we'll talk about that later on. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, let's say before you um, decided to go to college, um, uh, when you kind of stepped up your, uh, you know, stepped up as far as. Mm -hmm. you know, Okay, I'm 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 going to college. I'm, I've decided to do this. Um, what was your major in uh, in college? Uh, what were you considering your major to be in college? I put it like that because a lot of times people change their, their majors once they get into college. Uh, you know, Florence. I, 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 when I first got to college, I, I was about to say like water balloon fighting, uh, water guns fighting, or uh, something like that because we just had so much fun <laughs> in my freshman year, but. I mean, I, I had aspirations of being a businessman, uh, going to college, and uh, you know, just just wanted to, you know, be an entrepreneur. I mean, that was you know my goal. Wanted to open up my own sports store, uh, sporting goods store, or at least be the manager of one. Uh, uh, and so, my my ultimate goal when, once I first got to college was uh, being a businessman. So, um, and and, and you know, you know, in due time, it ended up changing, but that was my primary focus. Okay, so we're nearing the end of our conclusion of this portion. So, Sean, you want to let me let us know, um, you know, so when you 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 you're a young man, you went to college and, um, you know, how was college and mm. uh, up until your sophomore year? Just to, uh, well, college was. A minute. Yeah, well, college was great. And then join us next week for the conclusion with Mr. Sean Colloway. And you won't want to miss it. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want.